Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're going to look at a cool little application called Union Bytes Painter. It was just updated like a couple days back and that's when I became aware of it. This guy is in early access and in a nutshell, this is Substance Painter for pixel art. We're talking a literal maybe 1% of the functionality of Substance Painter, but the 1% it's got is the stuff you would need if you wanted to create pixel art textures in 3D. This is a really cool program. It's actually built on top of the Godot game engine. And if you want to learn more about it, the website is unionbytes.de. It is also available over on itch.io. Uh, this is commercial software. It is 12 bucks. But if you want to check it out, what we are looking at is uh, the full functioning demo. The only thing is you can't save your project. Other than that, it's the exact same thing you would get for the commercial version. Also, do keep in mind, this is early access. And this is very specifically for making and creating textures. This is not for high resolution. In fact, the texture limit is 512 by 512. And this is not a 3D modeler. This is for texture creation only. But what it does, it does it very well. If you're working and trying to create like a PlayStation 1 model kind of aesthetic, but you want to use modern PBR workflow, this program is perfect for you. So you're actually working on um, color, roughness, metallic, height, normal, and emission channels, uh, or you could just work in just color if you really wished. But uh, you have a full PBR workflow here while you're working with this guy. Let me just go back here and minimize this so it doesn't block my start bar. And we're going to go ahead and showcase a real world example. So I'm going to come up here, file, open, and we're going to open up this one. There's a number of examples for you to check out. Here you can see one of the more elaborate ones. Over here on the right, you see your 3D model. By the way, if you are creating something yourself from scratch, you can do the same thing. Basically, you pick your texture size up to 512 by 512 pixels, and you can make it tileable or not tileable, and you can throw in an OBJ file to work with as your preview. In this case, I'm gonna use the example that we see here. So on the left-hand side, you have your texture maps that you're working on. Right-hand side, you can see the real-time result. You can orbit this around. You do come over here, you've got control over the lighting in the world. So if you wanna have uh, point lights in the scene, you can turn a variety of point lights on and off. So you can kind of see the effects of lighting in the world. The cool thing about this is this is being powered by the Godot game engine. So the results you see here are exactly what you would get if you export out to Godot. It's also automatically generating some maps for you. So as you generate, use the height map, it will also create the normal map. And you can also edit maps directly. So I can, if I turn things off down here, then I'm working on just these maps. Now you can't uh, edit the normal directly because it is made by working on the height map but you can edit the height map and it will under it will make a uh, normal map for you which by the way normal map settings there are a couple of different options here so you've got uh, the ability to do Sobel, Pruitt, Cross, or Godot's uh, normal map system. So if you wanna do a Godot game, you're working in Godot, pick Godot, it will use Godot's algorithm for it. Uh, on top of that, when you are done, you can go ahead and export out your mesh in OBJ formats. Uh, which is pretty universal to be honest. And you can export out your texture maps. They All of the various different maps will be created in that directory of choice. So let us go back and take a look at some of the painting tools. So come back here, here are your painting tools basically in order. You have some tools for working directly with the UV meshes. What you see here, these green lines, those are the UV lines from the UV map. This is not a modeling tool. So those need to have been created in something like Blender already. And you're going to have to have some kind of a UV map to work with this tool in general. Uh, but you can actually turn the UVs off or on. I think it's this button right here. So if you don't actually want to see the underlying UV map, that's an option. Generally, you're going to want to leave it on though, because this is basically what translates the 3D models positions to the underlying texture maps. Because texture maps are 2Ds, models are 3Ds. You're going to have to translate somehow, right? That's what a UV map is all about. Uh, you have the ability to uh, paint directly. So let's go here. We're going to paint just in the color channel. I'm going to show just the color channel. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, here, I think this is around my door, I think, uh, right here. So we've got, we've got two options. We can basically paint, actually, I'm not hundred percent certain that is my, what do, what do I know a hundred percent is going to be what I'm looking at? Let's find, oh, this grill. All right, here we go. So this grill right here, it has a lot of metallicness on it. So right here, this guy seems to be this thing right here. So if I wanted to, I come in here, painting, and then I could go back here to the library, do a prefab color, or I could pick whatever I want over here. So let's go ahead and make this lime green. And we can either paint here, like so. And you're gonna notice it updated over here. Or what I can do is come over here and I can paint directly 
on the texture map. Whichever one works for you. And you're also going to notice you've got a couple different options for the painting. So right now we're using a normal mode. You can also do it as additive, subtractive, uh, multiply, min, and max uh, painting modes. It's like if you've ever used uh, typical um, uh, uh, Photoshop kind of document painting approach. You also, while you are painting, have control over the roughness and the height map and so on. So if you want, we can go here and we can turn everything back on. And then if I paint here, like so, this has a lot more metal look. So you'll get more of a reflective surface because what it did is the underlying metal map should have, so the see, we just painted it there and you can see the end result of it. So you got control over all of the various different channels as you are painting. You also have control over emissiveness. So let's say uh, we wanna make this little box over here give off some light. Uh, we come down here, emissive, let's do like a bright yellow. Okay, there we go. And uh, we're gonna paint just the emissive channel here. And we're gonna look at just the emissive channel here. And we're gonna paint directly on this. So see, you can even see as I'm doing it. So now we're giving off a light in that particular area. This is really cool. So if you need to do that kind of work, you can do so. You've got control over any of the individual aspects of your model. You can control what you are drawing on at any particular time here. You can control what is being displayed at any time over here. And you're getting that real time preview of the works you're, you're working on. Um, then we've got other tools here. We've got a line tool, so we're gonna do a lot of glowing lines here at this point. We have a unfilled rectangle. We have a filled rectangle. So let's say we wanted to do this window here. By the way, all of these tools also will work over here directly on the texture if you wished. Uh, we have unfilled and filled circle. We have a flood fill. Uh, so this is, so this guy, there you see. It's your traditional flood fill style approach for doing uh, pretty rapid fills if the color is all consistent in. By the way, that is based off of the um, pixels, not the texture. So for example, sorry, not the UV. So for example, if I click here, it's not gonna be limited by the underlying um, the UVs that are being used. It's being filled into the pixels of choice. So just do be aware that's how the flood fill works. Uh, then we got this really cool one. So we got here for tools for, um, you can tweak and modify the UVs slightly. I don't know how well it works. Some of the stuff again is early access. And then we got things here for doing um, masking. So it's like, I could say, all right, just this area right here. And then I could come up here and do a filter on that, for example, and add some noise to that area. So you're gonna see if we zoom in, uh, there is the end result. We're adding a bunch of noise to that one spot right there. Uh, and then you've got control over various different aspects of it. And we can add an amount of blur on it, for example, the blending mode, so on, random seed of that particular noise, and then apply it, and then that will paint over. I do find, uh, again, I'm not 100% certain uh, how um, much the masking and the filters are uh, fully implemented at this point in time. I'm not particularly certain, but you can use this basically to limit your selection to a certain area, and then you can make it um, wide, wide changes uh, as a result of them right here. When you got a tool select, you're gonna notice tool options over here, but I wanna showcase this one. This one's actually pretty cool. This is basically the ability to use uh, decals or decals. Um, you can have them uh, handle height or not, so the, the verticality of what you're drawing. So I can come in here, load one in, and I think this is basically the same thing as our scene file. So you can create these uh, as a scene. So if you have the ability to actually save, you could create your own. Uh, and then you're painting with these semi 3D objects. So here we can see we've got a number of decals available. So let's look at this armor part. This is like a piece of scale mail, for example. And then I can paint, oh, we're still painting with my emissive, super shiny green item. We don't really want that. All right, so what you do here with the stamp tool, all right, I'm gonna come out of this project. Let's just do a new flat surface. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here and you grab uh, the decal mode, load a decal. I'm gonna switch back and forth just to annoy the maximum number of people. Go over here, pick my decal. So for example, armor part, and then you can literally paste them and they, they understand verticality. So here you can see if you're doing like scale mail, you could create the scales rapidly like so. And these actually have, so you can see here the influence they're having. They know about how rough, how metal they are, height and so on, automatically generates normal as a result. So you can create these basically almost like your own scene. So you would save, if, if you had saving enabled, you could create a 3D object here and then you could paint with that 3D object as a decal on other objects, which is really kind of cool. So you could do some really neat effects for that. Like I said, if you're working on armor, you could paint armor effects directly on top using this system. 
And that's, uh, that's it. I don't really think I have anything else to show. Um, yeah, that's about, that's about the extent of it. Again, you could bring your own objects in. So when you create it, you'll notice, or I could actually import an object right here. So if you had an object file to bring in, you could do so. Uh, there are a number of samples here to check out. So you come on in here, you're gonna see, uh, for example, here's a 3D candle. Pretty straightforward on the whole. Again, you can see how an emissive map is being used here. So you look at just the emissive channel right here. You see how it's being used to create that candle effect. Uh, the UVs of the underlying candle here. Again, you can go to individual channels and see how they're working. If you have a height map, that height map is being used to automatically calculate a normal map. Um, it's a really kind of a cool tool. Again, there are certain things that are missing. One thing I think I would definitely like to see is some kind of layer support. You can get all kinds of neat, cool effects uh, out of layering functionality, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's quite functional already. If you want to basically paint or draw 3D textures uh, for, you know, 512 by 512 pixel or less style art, this is a neat tool. And if you're interested in picking it up, once again, uh, it is available over on itch.io. It's $11.99. Uh, the last update was like yesterday, at least as of when I'm recording this video. Um, so it is updated. There was a bit of a delay uh, between the updates, but there was quite a bit in the update. So definitely it is a program under development. This is when I became aware of it personally, and I thought I would share it with you. Uh, there are downloads available for both Windows and Linux, if you want to check that out. Uh, it's a very neat program for sure. It's niche, 100% niche, but... Uh, Definitely a cool one. So that is Union Bytes Painter. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.